It was at the end of the third chapter of the Black Swordsman arc that we were introduced to the most important object in Berserk, the Behelet. This egg-shaped stone with a jumbled face inscribed on its surface is as unsettling as it is deadly. By itself, the Behelet can do no harm, but when it touches the hands of the person that it was meant for, it has the power to unleash great evil and destruction upon the world. It's a temptation of power that arrives when you feel at your most utterly powerless. Behelets are usually found in the possession of those who are destined to become or join the God Hand. So Guts having one on him makes sense considering his purpose post-Eclipse, but he's had this Chekhov's gun in his back pocket for well over 400 chapters now, and not once has he made a move to fire it. This begs the question, is Guts going to use his Behelet before the end of the story? And if he does, how would it alter the course of Berserk? We'll answer all that and more in this video. Guts is Behelet. When, how, and why he acquired it. The when and how of how Guts got his Behelet are related to one another, so let's start with the why. The reason Guts picked up a Behelet of his own is because he knew that this egg charm was somehow connected to his arch nemesis, the God Hand. He thought it was weird when he was introduced to it, not in the third chapter of the Black Swordsman arc, but on his second morning as a falcon. Chronologically, Guts saw a Behelet for the first time in the Golden Age Part 8 dangling from Griffith's neck. The falcon told him that it was a good luck charm he bought from a fortune teller which would supposedly give him the world in exchange for his flesh. But what really creeped out Guts was the fact that the egg's eyes could open. He had no idea that it would change his life back then, but he should have picked up on it during his first battle with Nosferatu Zod. The Immortal One took one one look at Griffith's neck piece and backed off, but not before telling Guts that an inescapable death was about to visit. When the Falcon recovered from his injuries, Guts informed him that the Behelet was the reason they were still alive, and Griffith took that to mean that it was an actual good luck charm. That explanation fit the events at the time, so Guts didn't question things further, but his mind went into overdrive a year later when he saw the Behelet in Griffith's hand at the beginning of the eclipse. It was extremely odd that this object was in that place at that time, because Guts was sure Griffith didn't have it on him when they rescued him. And he wasn't wrong. The fallen falcon lost his behelet shortly after he was put under the care of the Tower of Rebirth's jailer, and he hadn't seen it in over a year. Now it was dangling from Griffith's left arm, and its shape was different from what Guts recalled. The behelet he remembered had a misshapen face adorning its surface, and its eyes would remain closed unless someone tried to touch it or stared at it for too long. Now its shape was in the proper alignment of a human face, and its eyes were wide open and leaking tears of blood. That happened at the exact moment the world changed so Guts suspected the Behelet was responsible for it. And then, the God Hand showed up and pretty much confirmed this theory. They explained that the reason Griffith and his Falcons were inside the Eclipse Interstice was because he used his Crimson Behelet to call them. They didn't explain the exact mechanics of how this calling works, but the explanation was enough for Guts to understand the basic function of a Behelet. It was a key to opening a door to another dimension, one where the God Hand reigns supreme. Once he survived the Eclipse, Guts launched a one-man war against all of demon kind, with his primary objective being locating the God Hand. Griffith was a part of that metaphysical group now, and Guts had to chase whispers on the wind to track them down. He could find apostles easily enough, his brand of sacrifice acted as a pain-based radar in their presence, but apostles used behelets to obtain their proper forms, and Guts had no idea how to find the behelets themselves. He also wasn't aware of the fact that most apostles retain their behelets even after their transformation, which we learned when we saw Skull Knight devouring Rosine and the Egg of the Perfect World's behelets. This is probably why he was shocked to see one in the possession of his target's former physician. Vargas in Guardian Angels of Desire Part 2. Part 3 saw him explain the functioning of a Behelet perfectly, which means the reason he has it is because he wants to use it. At that point in the story, Guts was two years deep into his war and not an inch closer to reaching the God Hand. He'd killed numerous apostles and their pseudo-spawns, which kept his hunger for revenge at bay, but nothing would satisfy it until he reached Griffith, aka the newest member of the God Hand, Femto. He knew he needed a Behelet to open the door to such an interstice, and it was during his hunt for the Slug Count that he finally acquired acquired a key of his own. In exchange for saving his life from the Count's pseudo-apostle Zondark, Guts confiscated Vargas's Behelet. He saw it being put to use in part four of that same mini-arc, but he was too caught up in his own mirth to process what led to its activation. He only realized it was crying when Puck drew his attention to it, and his brand started reacting to the God Hand's presence. On that particular occasion, Guts was too beat up and consumed with getting his lick back from Griffith to notice the finer details of a reincarnation ceremony. But he was conscious enough to take the Behelet with him and keep it until he understood how to use it. That understanding came to him in chapter 202, but it was attached to yet another roadblock. What happened when Guts finally understood his Behelet's nature? 
After the events of the Conviction Arc, Guts knew that he couldn't protect Casca and feed his inner malice at the same time. He had almost done something horrifying to Casca, and he acknowledged the fact that he needed companions for his journey. The Black Swordsman's group had one mission, to get to the magical island of Elfhelm. Their guide was of no use, because Puck's memory is about as good as a goldfish, so the addition of magical characters was inevitable. In chapter 197, the crew was attacked by a group of trolls, and in the very next chapter, they met the witch who would become indispensable to their travels. Shirke. Shirke helps Isidro and Puck rescue Casca and Farnese using her magic, and that interaction eventually introduces Guts to Flora, the Witch of the Spirit Tree Mansion. Flora is Shirke's mentor and an exceptionally old mage. She's remembered by a man who visited her 50 years ago and claims she still looks the same, but with age comes experience, wisdom, and most importantly, knowledge. Though she might be knocking on death's door, Flora remains one of this world's greatest mages, based off her knowledge of the astral world alone, and it's this knowledge that finally explains a Behelet's true nature to Guts. The Black Swordsman wasn't far off from the truth in surmising that the Behelet was a key for summoning the God Hand. However, his definition of it was missing a crucial component called fate. When he shows Flora the Behelet in his possession, her first reaction is to ask if it belonged to him, and where in the blazes he could have found it. Before she finished her line of questions, Guts put it to bed by saying he got it from a certain man, and that was enough for her to understand his meaning. Flora goes on to pretty much echo what he already knew about its functions, but when he asks her how he can use it to summon the God Hand, she tells him she's of no use. Guts thought that the Behelet was like a regular key that can be used if he just found the right keyhole, but Flora explained to him that it was much more than that. A Behelet is a highly spiritual object that is intrinsically tied to the fate of the person that it's meant for. It is sent forth from the Abyss by an entity that is a akin to a god, and this god is the ultimate master of the fate associated with the Behelet. When the time is right, it would surely appear in the hands of its rightful owner, even if they were to discard it. And if you weren't the true owner of the Behelet, then it would leave your grasp, no matter how much you tried to hold on to it. It's more like a biometric key which only matches the signature of the person it's destined for. So the real question then becomes, is Guts the owner of the Behelet, or is he simply holding on to it? Either way, Flora wanted it out of his hands ASAP, because if the former was true, then she had just helped out one of the monsters destined to kill her. Understanding the nature of the Behelet only frustrated Guts even further, because while he was aware of the fact that Griffith was now within his reach, he also knew that a true resolution to his problems would only be possible with the obliteration of the entire God Hand. He could activate the egg if he was destined to become a part of their demonic gang, but that was something Guts would resist until his bitter end. So, when it comes to making use of his biggest ace in the hole, the Black Swordsman has hit a bit of an impasse. Right now, the Behelet is nothing more than Puck's plaything and a sort of guiding system for astral energy. Whenever it comes closer to the God Hand's energy signature, it starts resonating and rearranging itself, which lets Guts know something terrible was about to happen. Even that ability was more or less nullified when the great roar of the astral world occurred because now, all God Hand members exist within the physical world. The Behelet is as good as his brand of sacrifice in terms of being a tool for a task. So why is it that Guts holds on to it? Is it because he wants to add it to the Skull Knight's sword of actuation? Is it because he needs a compass to get to the Abyss? Or is it because he's thinking about using it? Because if it's the last one, then there is some precedent for it, no matter how out of character it might seem. Will Guts actually use the Behelet? What will happen if he does? Let's get one thing clear before we enter speculation country over here. Guts is probably never going to use the Behelet to gain power. This isn't just because of the kind of man he is, it's also because the God Hand has flat out stated the same thing. In Guardian Angels of Desire Part 5, Guts impresses his adversaries with his inhuman tolerance for punishment and pain. When a branded individual comes anywhere near a God Hand, the pain generated by that person's brand of sacrifice is so intense that it can even take their life. Guts resisted all of that and got a swing off on Griffith, which was utterly unprecedented for the titular angels. Slan is especially enamored by Guts' fighting spirit and wishes that he could join them, but Conrad points out that Guts hasn't been ordained by causality, so he can never become one of them. It was a throwaway statement when Miura was penning the Black Swordsman arc, we're sure, but it holds a lot of weight in the grand scheme of things. Because what Conrad basically meant was that Guts wasn't fated to become a demon, hence he couldn't use a Behelet. But here's the thing, while the God Hand can predict most of the future, they can't predict all of it. And even then, there's no guarantee that the fate that they present to someone will be accepted by them, especially if they're extremely willful. Fate isn't something that's thrust upon a person, they always have a choice to either give into it or struggle against it. Even if one God Hand member thinks Guts isn't destined to join them, that truth itself can change if he changes as a person. Guts
Guts has proven to be a leaping fish capable of breaching the causal current. And more than that, the Black Swordsman has a personal recruiter watching his every move from the astral world at all times. Slan has tried to get Guts to use his behalit on at least one occasion. When she met him in Clip-Off, she told Guts that she'd been keeping tabs on him since the eclipse, and she really liked what he had shown her. Slan tortured Guts with her superior body and then taunted him into using the behalit to gain similar power to him. They were interrupted by the arrival of Skull Knight, who gave Guts a crucial assist in getting rid of the false goddess. But her taunts actually revealed something to us. The behalit at Guts' side most likely belongs to him. And what sort of solidifies this idea in our minds is chapter 373. Let me ask you something. Don't you think it's odd that Guts still has Betchy on him? I mean, sure, it's not something he can easily lose, considering it's one of his greatest assets, but why hasn't it been called by its real owner yet? Like Flora explained in chapter 202, Behalits were sure to leave their possessor's hand at the exact moment in which their owners craved power. Apostles are born every other day on planet Earth, it feels like. Just take a look at how many of them have become a part of Griffith's reborn Band of the Falcon. It seems likely that every single apostle in the world was under his command, and any new ones would rush to join him as well. So, how come Guts' Behalit is still with him? It's been a solid year since he acquired it, surely it would have left his grasp if he wasn't meant to use it. Because it hasn't, we refuse to rule out the possibility that it is his. And if it really is, then Guts' usage of the same will come down to his willpower. We've already seen one character resist the call of the Behalit and get turned into abyss food for it. That man gave Guts his Behalit, the Slug Count. According to our observations, Slug Count was going to be the first twice reincarnated apostle before Ganeshka fulfilled that role. We say this because at the end of the Black Swordsman arc, he was being encouraged by the God Hand into ascending a second time and cutting all ties with his humanity, which took the form of his daughter in this case. His rejecting the God Hand for his daughter proved that even apostles can possess human instincts, but the point here is, even those fated to be a part of the God Hand's plans can resist it if they have the will to do so. And Guts has been operating on willpower alone for a very long time. Instead of using the Behalit to achieve greater power, he relies on the Berserker armor, but it is a double-edged sword. The armor has made him weaker, both physically and mentally. Physically, Guts is no longer in the shape he used to be. He's rapidly losing his senses, and the more he uses the Berserker armor, the more he has to rely on it for basic mobility. Mentally, he exhausts so much of his willpower on holding the armor back that when he isn't fighting enemies, he's fighting his own psyche. The Berserker armor exposes a person's worst qualities and tries to make them their only qualities, because it allows the suit to function at max capacity. So, the longer you spend fighting with it, the more it kills you and makes your body powerless. And in chapter 373, Guts's willpower bottomed out hard. He was already spiraling after losing Casca to Griffith in the midst of Elfhelm's destruction, and the only thing that he wanted was power. His Beast of Darkness is a manifestation of the version of himself that Guts sees as being most powerful, but its strength is contingent on his malice. The Beast has tried to get Guts to become like Griffith, even before its hold over him was intensified by the Berserker armor. And after Griffith broke Guts' mind by escaping Elfhelm with Casca, the Beast has broken free of its chains. In Chapter 373, it taunts Guts for his condition and rightly recognizes his most desperate desire, to gain more power. It tells him that it will give him all the power he needs if he surrenders himself. And this statement is connected to the Berserker armor. But what if it wasn't? What if the Beast was referring to the Behalit in Guts's supply pouch? And what if the Black Swordsman finally gives up trying to prove humanity's superiority over demons and accepts reality for what it was? Right now, Guts has been relieved of his armor, so there's no danger of him going berserk as soon as he regains consciousness, but the same cannot be said for his decision on what's to be done with the Behalit in his possession. If Guts does decide to use it to gain power, he already has his sacrifices lined up. He used to deny his bonds in his younger years because he knew nothing but loneliness. However, with the passage of time, he's come to recognize his new comrades as family, and sacrificing them in exchange for strength would be out of character for Guts, but not the Black Swordsman. The Black Swordsman is consumed by a single thought, and that is the annihilation of his enemies. He's willing to take every shortcut available to him, no matter how life-threatening it might be, in order to satisfy his revenge. He's used civilians as decoys before, and he bled out an apostle in front of their only living family member. When it comes down to basic humanity, he has none and that's fertile ground for birthing a brand new apostle. If Guts were to become an apostle, we already know what form he would take. It would be a bipedal version of what he already sees himself as, 
but Guts' apostle form would have him embody his inner beast of darkness. He would gain wolf-like features and retain the same ferocity that made him such an effective apostle hunter. If Guts were to accept the God Hand's deal, he could even display Zod as the strongest apostle alive, and he would finally have all the power he needed to make his dream come true. However, therein lies the biggest contradiction of this plan, because using a Behlet would make Guts Griffith's natural subordinate, and that's the last thing he wants to put himself through. Emperor Ganeshka was a powerful apostle that tried to resist the God Hand, and he was doing just fine until he came into close contact with Griffith. Once that happened, he lost his mind, because he realized just how big the gap between their powers was, and how naturally subservient he became to Griffith's mere present without his own knowledge or consent. Becoming an apostle would mean Guts would have to submit to Griffith's every demand, whether he liked it or not, and that's not why he's fighting the guy. Even though they're two sides of the same coin, the one thing that distinguishes Guts from Griffith is the former's belief in himself and his actions. Guts is the kind of person who rejects fate in favor of doing things for one's own reasons, no matter how eerily those two things might overlap. By becoming an apostle, he would be giving in to the same thing he's been struggling against for all these years, so that's probably not the path he will take when it comes to the behlet he has on him. It's more likely that Guts will use it to fashion some sort of weapon, similar to Skull Knight's Sword of Actuation, or add it to that sword and take ownership of it himself. Skull Knight's attack patterns have been thoroughly deciphered by the God Hand, which is what caused the great roar of the astral world but Guts, not so much. They tend to see him as inconsequential because of his status as a squirming sacrifice, and that arrogance could allow him to sneak attack them successfully, doing what Skull Knight failed to do. He could also just be keeping the Behalid warm for its true owner, which, if it turns out to be Puck, will leave us devastated. Because otherwise, the only use he has for it is as a god hand tracker, and while that's nice and all, Guts still doesn't have a way of dealing with them permanently. Now that he's in Kushan territory and on the same side as the world's leading Behalid expert, Dai that might change, if both sides agree to work with each other as peacefully as possible. Otherwise, it won't take much for the Black Swordsman to act on his desire for vengeance and plunge his own friend's souls into the abyss. All he's thinking about right now is how to get more power to crush his enemies, and the Behalit is the most tempting shortcut that can present itself to him. Marvelous Verdict! One thing we can say with the utmost certainty is that whatever endgame Studio Gaga and Koji Mori have in mind for the series, it will involve the use of Guts's Behalit. This particular Chekhov's gun has been hanging on the wall for hundreds of chapters, and it can't turn into a MacGuffin anymore because we all know what it's about. The purpose behind Guts's Behalit is one that still leaves Berserk fans scratching their heads because we simply don't know how it'll come into play. We've done our best to explain our thoughts on the same, but now we want to hear from you guys. What do you think? Will Guts use his behlet to become an apostle, or will he fashion a dagger of actuation with it to go along with Skull Knight's sword? Let us know your thoughts in the comments down below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you haven't already done that. And don't forget, keep on struggling, strugglers.